Welcome back. We are now in segment 6.3 and in this segment we will be discussing about resources surplus. So in the previous segment 6.2 we have discussed, we have started a discussion on the, the liability side of the balance sheet. We have discussed the first item that is capital. We have seen the what is the, the treatment, the, the CMA treatment we need to give to the capital. That is we place it under the, the liability side under the head of head called paid up capital. And we have discussed various issues related to capital. What are the issues you need to be, which you, which you need to be aware of, which you need to take care of when when you encounter the item called capital. We especially discussed in, in great in great detail the need to ensure that the, the envisaged capital was brought in, right? So please be thorough on those concepts. In this, So in this segment, we'll be discussing about uh, the next item that is reserves and surplus. So if a company earns profits, so we already discussed this belong, belongs to the, 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 the company might have obtained funds from a variety of parties, right? Donors obviously have contributed something called capital. But there might be other entities that have lent funds to the, the company. The banks might have sanctioned some loans. There might be some creators and there might be various other the people who have uh, provided funds to the company. And with these funds, the, the company has run business, earned some profit. But this profit always goes to the owners, right? So if you're a banker, if you're sanctioned a, a loan of 10 lakhs to a company, what you're always interested in is getting back this 10 lakhs plus some interest. You're never bothered about the profit of the company. If the company makes up to 100% profit, that doesn't mean he's going to pay you 20 lakhs, right? You are, you are not going to share in the profits of the company. Whatever profits the company earn, it will go. It will go into the the owners because that is the the risk they are taking. Because not just the profit, if there is a loss, it is also to be incurred by the. It has to also be borne by the owners, and that's why we are saying all profits has to go into the owners. The reason why we are saying all profits have to go to the owners is, in case there is a loss. The, the person who is going to take this loss, who is, to, who is going to absorb this loss is the owners. If there is a loss, he cannot say, please, please give me concession of 5 lakhs. I will pay you now only 5 lakhs. Or please waive my loan entirely. I am not going to pay you anything. You are not going to share either in the profit or in the loss of the company. What you are interested in as a banker is only recovery of your juice. But for the owner, all profits will go to him and also all losses will go to him. Right? So when you find an item called reserves and surplus. Right. We are going to discuss shortly what is the difference between reserves and surplus. But for the moment, let us discuss the CMA classification. When you find an item called reserves and surplus in a, in a balance sheet provided to you, you are going to place this item into the, the liability set. Right? You are going to place it under the, the liability side of the, the CMA data. Please note that balance sheet will be having liability and assets. So liabilities we have discussed already are all the sources of funds, whereas assets are the uses to which the, the funds have been deployed. Right? The reserves and surplus will be a, a source of fund. You will be placing under the, the liability set. So this might be a bit difficult for you to understand. So in the earlier chapter, we in the in earlier segment, we discussed about capital. So capital being a source of fund is all right. You can straight away appreciate it. Because capital is a, uh, is a fund that is provided by the owner, owners of the fund, the promoters. So this is a source of fund. So that is easy to understand. This is reserves and surplus. How reserves and surplus? For the moment, let us for simplicity let us assume this is the profit right we are going to discuss in detail what reserve is what surplus is but for the moment let us have a simple term called profit i'm saying reserves and surplus means profit right the profit earned by the the business so we can say capital is a prof is a source of fund that is very clear so profit earned by the business how is this a source of fund right so please see that a business has earned profit we said is going to go to the owners so already the business have, the owners have already infused what is known as capital, right? They already in invested a cap, something called capital. Some other funds, bank loans and other funds, they, they have done some activity there into the business and generated some profit. So this profit has gone to the owners. So what could the owners do with this profit? The owners have got a lot of options for this profit. This is their profit, right? This is their profit. Just as to the, the just as to the, uh, here or here one more fund, one more source of fund could be the bank loan. So what did you give to the owner? Interest. What did you give to the banker? You gave interest. You repaid the loan and then you had some interest. Similarly, as a as a owner, what you are interested, just as the bank is interested in interest, you are interested in the profit. So this profit belongs to you. You can do whatever you want. What you can do? You can withdraw. Use it for your personal use. Because if you are employee in a company, you will get salary. If you are an owner, you won't have any salary. right? This is the profit. So this profit is for you. You can you can withdraw it and use it for your personal use or reinvest funds back into the business. See that? The business that is growing. This is a business that is doing well. 
So this needs additional capital. You need additional funds to be pumped in so that the business grows. Maybe you want to expand. Maybe you want to open more showrooms, right? Maybe you want to increase your product range. So to, to, to increase your business, now you need more funds. What you do, instead of using this profit, you pump it back into the business, right? So this profit, you have, you, you have two options. One, you could use it for your own personal use or you can reinvest it back into the business, right? So in that sense, the source of fund, right? This is the source of fund in the sense that the promoters, the owners, by foregoing the profit for the for the personal consumption, reinvesting it back into the business. So it is once again a source of fund from the owners. So capital, capital is a source of fund from the owner side. Capital is a owner side. Also the retained earnings, retained profits, right? The profits earned by the the company, but which the owners have have decided not to use it for their personal use, but but pump it back into the business for the business growth. That is also a source of fund. So the owners are contributing to the the company funds wise in two ways. One, original capital, and is the in profits. So please see that in the case of proprietorship or partnership firms, right? In the case of proprietorship or partnership firm, there is no concept called uh, reserves and surplus. So you have something called, say for example, partners is a partnership firm, you have something called partners capital. So the partners originally contributed 10 lakhs. So you'll be, you'll be maintaining an entry here, yeah? You have a, a separate uh, register. See, all the credits here, all the credits. So initially they uh, pumped in 10 lakhs, here all the debits. So in the year if the company has earned some profit, say 2 lakhs. So this will be credited to the partners capital. Be so of course each individual partner will be having his own capital fund so we are clubbing it all together for the for, for all the for, for all the partners put together the business has earned a profit of 2 lakhs so this 2 lakhs will be going into the 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 partners capital so out of these 2 lakhs maybe they have they have drawn some 1.5 lakhs for their personal use so the closing will be 10.5 lakhs so originally they started with 10 lakhs at the end of the year after taking into account the profit and the withdrawals it has ended with 10.5 lakhs so capital as a single entity has Go grown up from 10 lakhs to 10.5 lakhs. This happens in the case of proprietorship and partnership firms where we do not segregate between the, the profit and the capital. We club the cap we club the profit into the partners account into the capital account. Right? Since the since the profits belong to the since the profits belong to the partners and the partners. For a company we maintain a separate account called capital account and a reserves and surplus. So for the for the moment let us assume this this is nothing but profit. So we have a separate account for the the profits earned by the company and the capital. So we're not going to touch this capital. If the originally the promoters have contributed 100 lakhs, we're going to maintain this 100 lakhs as it is. Any profits we are going to add to this account called reserves and surplus, right? The profits earned by the, the company are going to be added to a separate, a separate account called reserves and surplus. So this is also, in a way, we discussed it is a funds contributed by the owner. The owner have contributed one in the way of capital and two in the way of retained earnings because if he has, if he has chosen not to not to invest this amount back into the say for example company right now after earn, after earning a profit of uh, 25 lakhs see the, the capital of the the company is 100 lakhs right right now it is in need of additional funds of 25 lakhs for expansion and various other reasons now the company happened to get a profit of 25 lakhs so if the promoters decide not to promoters decide let us use this for a personal consumption let us use this for a personal consumption then this 25 lakhs has to be met from somewhere because the business needs 25 lakhs maybe it has, it has to take a bank loan so some way it has to meet this 25 lakhs additional requirement but now if the promoters decide let us not use it for a personal consumption let us reinvest it back into the business in that case it did not get a bank loan right so in a way this bank loan and this retail earnings are both the same because they are meeting the additional 25 lakhs requirement one it is an external source that is the that is the bank loan or you can use it from the retail earnings so the promoters instead of using it for the personal consumption has foregone that opportunity and invested the amount right into the right back into the business so retail earnings is also a source of fund and therefore you have to put it under the liabilities and the liabilities we, we told that liabilities of balance sheet will list all the sources of fund so this is also a source of fund in the sense that had they not reinvested this the company should have made met this requirement for some other source maybe they have to go on for a bank loan or raise some unsecured loan so some other source they have to they should have they should have met this 25 lakhs but now because the owners have invested back into the the retained earnings into the business that bank loan is not now required so instead of that retained earnings will be a source of fund is that point clear so retained earnings is a 
reserves and surplus for for the moment we are assuming it is a profit it is a, a source of fund and therefore you have to classify it under the liabilities of the balance sheet right so this is a liability because it is a source of fund the owners could have used it elsewhere but they chose to reinvest therefore it is a source of fund and therefore you have to classify it under the liability as another balance sheet right so let us now see the difference between a, a reserve and a surplus right let us see the difference between the surplus and the reserve and in the process we are going to see something called the profit and loss appropriation account again this is an uh, accounting terminology which you will not be too much concerned about but since the point has come right now since the discussion has come for the surplus and reserve we are going to uh, briefly mention what this uh, profit and loss appropriation account is so if you draw the PL account of a company the company has made some income of 500 lakhs and various other expenses all put together raw material and all expenses put together some 400 lakhs so finally it has added to the profit of 100 lakhs so we we told that this profit belongs to the owners and if the if the owners have decided to reinvest it back into the business so this will be flowing to the balance sheet in the balance sheet we have the liabilities and assets and the liabilities we have the capital the paid up capital we have the reserves and surplus into this reserves and surplus right into this reserves and surplus this 100 will be going so already the the promoters have infused 800 lakhs now this year the company has made a profit of 100 lakhs which the promoters chose to reinvest it back into the business so this 100 lakhs will be added to the reserves and surplus so now capital plus reserves and surplus is 900 lakhs in the next year right if the capital if the if the company makes another profit like right, 150 lakhs so then this 150 lakhs will again go into this reserves and surplus now reserves and surplus will be 100 plus 150 it gets accumulated right reserves and surplus gets accumulated so this 100 becomes 100 250 lakhs so now capital in reserves and surplus what we call as net worth we're going to see that term later net worth so now it will be 1050 so this gets go on gives go on so on gives a limit so the profit of every year is going to be added to the cumulatively is going to be added to the reserves and surplus that is based in the liability side of a balance sheet that point is clear various income items various expense items and finally arrive at the profit so once we get the profit right we have something called pnl appropriation PNL appropriation account. So PNL appropriation accounts comes after the PNL account is prepared, but before the balance sheet is prepared. So this comes in between, right? PNL appropriation account comes after the PNL account is prepared, but before the balance sheet is prepared. So PNL appropriation. So what is this term? Appropriation. Appropriation means in a way it's a distribution. So how are you going to distribute that profit? Say for example, the company has made a profit of hundred lakhs. So, to what purpose are you going to use this 100 lakhs? Right? What are, what is the purpose for which you are going to use this 100 lakhs? So, there will be an account called PNL appropriation account. This is a separate account. So, you'll maintain an account called PNL appropriation account. So, into the credits you'll get all the credits. What is the credits? There's a profit. So, already you have a uh, opening. There's the last year cumulative uh, reserves and surplus. So, to this you'll be adding this year's profit. So, all this this will be the credit items. And what are you going to do with this? profit so we will we'll introduce the term called reserve and surplus so the company can use this amount for a particular reserve right so what is a reserve so the difference between reserve and surplus is something which you need to know at this stage say that reserve is planned where surplus is unplanned right let us elaborate on this if the company decides to put aside right if a company decides to put aside profit for a particular purpose you can use it for a particular purpose say reserve say for example a company has raised some debentures in the past so debenture as you're going to discuss uh, in a future lecture it is a, a debt instrument just like bank loan it is a debt instrument but it has some uh, uh, special rights compared to a bank loan company has raised, raised a debenture and it's going to this debenture is uh, the the maturity right this debenture the company has to pay in the next year the coming year so right now we are in september 2000 say 13 so by march 2014 they have to be close so the company needs some funds so it has to create a reserve so what the company does it creates a reserve known as debenture redemption reserve uh, if the tenure is 10 years say for example somewhere in 2003 the company has raised this debenture every year to be out of the profit is going to be put aside some amount into this debenture redemption reserve for example if the total uh, debentures raised was 100 lakhs right in 2003 the the company has raised debentures of 100 lakhs and 2013 has to uh, repay all these debentures so what it does every year maybe it has planned to put aside for this 10 years every year is going to allocate some 10 lakhs out of the profits generated every year is going to put aside put aside 10 lakhs out of the profit every year so in 2014 2003 right 2004 
out of the profit earned in that year 2004 10 let's put the 10 lakhs into the debenture redemption reserve so in 2005 another 10 lakhs has gone into this so by the year 2013 this reserve is now 100 lakhs so the company has funds to repay the debentures so you can understand that reserve is a uh, is is putting aside uh, amount from out of the profits earned to meet a particular purpose right surplus is something different surplus is something unplanned reserve is something you have plans for you you set aside for a particular purpose but surplus you don't have plans see whatever is excess left out of the this is a surplus in the PL account after allocating to the various after allocating to the various reserves whatever is left you'll be transferring it to the surplus account you see this that's why and that's why i told you about the the pnl appropriation account if you see the pnl appropriation account you can see these are all the the credit items so balance of surplus of the previous year net profit you'll add and various other items so into the debits you'll see in the debits the profits earned right the profit earned for this year and the the balance of the previous year the put together all this uh, surplus that you can use it for various purposes you can transfer to what is known as a general reserve right you can have a debenture redemption reserve, reserve which we just now discuss I have a dividend distribution or income tax not provided for in the previous year right so you can do various entries so you can transfer to the dividend a proposed dividend so various with this profit the profit earned along with the surplus till last year what are you going to do this with this profit you can use it for various purposes that is what the PL appropriation account tells you so it will be setting aside the profit out of the profit it will be setting aside a portion of the the profit for some general reserve for some dividend purpose for some debenture ratio for some debenture uh, redemption so various purpose is going to allocate the profit and finally whatever is left it will transfer to the balance sheet so this surplus goes to plus see reserve is different so what what we are saying is the company has made say for example in a simple case let us pay this company has made a profit of 100 lakhs so this the company has decided let us pay a, a dividend of this is the plan of the company how we how is going to use the 100 lakhs let us pay a dividend of 20 lakhs let's contribute some 10 lakhs towards the debenture redemption fund last year we had some uh, income tax that's not provided for so this is where to pay it so some 5 lakhs we are going to uh, provide for that right so so various other purposes it has but so all put together all put together let us say 40 so 40 45 55 75 so totally 75 it has put it for so the balance 25 after meeting the various reserves whatever is left it will be transferred to the surplus so if you see the reserves and surplus schedule in a, a balance sheet for a company you'll have various sub items under the reserves and surplus you have something called the general reserve general reserve you have something called capital reserve right and various other items uh, then you have something called the finally you have something called you have you mentioned something called share share premium securities share securities premium account right this is a share premium account you can say you can have something called the revaluation reserve so various reserves you have and finally you have something called the surplus in penal account so after meeting the various uh, planned expenses right planned items like various reserves water is left you'll be transferring the surplus see in spite of having various sub items from the point of view of CMA, you are going to have a single entry. So when you see an item called reserves and surplus in a balance sheet, this total figure you are going to take it into the CMA data. You have a separate item called reserves and surplus. In CMA data, we already discussed CMA data is a short format. We don't have a space for a detail breakup. So even though you have the, the balance sheet of the company provides detail breakup, you are going to take the total figure of reserves and surplus and put it straight away into the CMA data under the head of reserves and surplus. So the individual breakup is not necessary from a CMA point of view, but there are a couple of points which you need to be careful of such as revaluation reserve we are going to discuss it shortly but before that we have to understand a distinction between reserve and provision see in an earlier chapter we discussed about something called provision i think this we discussed uh, in respect of provision for tax and also we have discussed an example of provision for doubtful debts so what we said then was when we are certain that we are going to incur an expense but we don't know what the exact amount in case of provision for tax as on 31 march you are going to arrive at some uh, tax as per the company's assessment based on Companies Act, right? But the actual tax is going to be assessed by the IT authority somewhere in the next year. So as on this date, you don't know what is the tax to be paid. So you are you have to pay some amount, but you don't know what is the amount. You create a what is known as a provision. Provision is something which are go which you know you have to incur the expense, but you're not sure what is the amount. So you because you're not uh, certain about the amount, you create what is known as the provision. See, but you have to see the difference between reserve and provision here. See, provision. This is the provision, right? This is the provision. This is the reserve. Please zoom the please zoom it if you want to have a more uh, magnified view so the points that you have to remember is provision is created irrespective of whether there is a profit or loss please see that for example the company has to company has some provision for doubtful debts 
so we already discussed this if the if the past experience of the company suggests that it is going to uh, have some bad debts and the company decides to give it a provision for doubtful debts irrespective of whether the company has a profit or loss is going to create this provision because it is a an expense or liability that is certain to happen see this is going to happen it's a possible loss or a possible expense so this is something you have to create irrespective of whether you have the profit or loss but reserve your allies only when there is a sufficient profit for its creation unless you have profit sufficient provision you cannot create a reserve so that is one point you need to reserve the other point is profit and loss is going to be affected by its creation because if you have a provision it's going to decrease the profit but whereas in the case of reserve is not going to have any impact because after you arrive at the profit then you start allocating it to the reserve so that is another point you need to remember then the owners cannot have any claim on this because you have set this aside for a particular specific uh, uh, liability like income tax this is set aside for a purpose and the owners do not have a claim on this but whereas in case of reserve the owners can claim it because it is created out of profits and then as far as the classification is concerned this you are going to show in the asset side provision is going to show on the asset side by deducting from the uh, corresponding asset for example provision for doubtful debts means from the sundry data you are going to deduct this amount and show it on the asset side whereas here is going to show in the liability side anyway the point the point the major point you have to remember though reserve and provision seem to be setting aside amount for a purpose you have to be clear about one point irrespective of whether the business may risk profit or loss the company has to provide a has to provide provision because it is a it is obligatory that expense or liability or loss is obligatory and has the company has to provide whereas reserve is something the company if it has profits is going to is at the discretion of the management to create a reserve or not right and as we have already discussed in corporate balance sheets you are having the reserves under various items capital reserve capital redemption securities premium redemption reserve revaluation various items but in the cma data we have only one entry combined entry for all the reserves and surplus so in a balance sheet when you see the item of reserves and surplus let's not get into the individual breakup but straight away put the amount you, you can pursue pursue use them for a deeper understanding but you need not worry about the breakup you can straight away put that amount in the uh, corresponding item in the cma data that is the reserves and surplus unless unless there is an item called Revaluation is. We are going to see this treatment separately. Shortly, we are going to see what is the treatment to be done if you encounter revaluation is. We, we told that there are various entries under the reserves and surplus, but we are going to discuss only a few of them which are uh, relevant to us. First of all, we will we'll discuss what is known as share premium or the securities premium. So, a company issues what are known as shares, right? This is the basic method in which the company will be offering membership right this is the shares so the promoters will be subscribing to some shares and later if it is a listed company the public can also subscribe to what are known as shares so by by purchasing shares you are a uh, you are a owner in a way you are a owner of the the company even if you purchase 10 rupees shares in a way you are a owner of the company because the profits are going to be shared with you right there is something called a face value say so say for example the face value of the the share is 10 rupees now if you have some reasonable exposure to the capital market that is the share market you know that in respect of the face value the company the, the share can have something called as a market value say, say for example the face value is set but the, comp the, the share of the company might be trading for some 100 rupees on the stock exchange so if you want to buy the buy the uh, shares of a, a very a reputed company like Infosys you cannot purchase at the share the face value you can never purchase because it's a very reputed company and people will be willing to people will be willing to spe to shell out a large amount of money to purchase the shares of Infosys so face value is different market value is different so in the secondary market that is the share market we are not trading on the face value face value can be anything it can be 1 rupee or 10 rupee or 100 rupees but the market value is what is important in the secondary market because you will be trading on the the market value so this 10 rupee share the company might become so successful that people are now are willing to pay 1000 rupees to get even one share one share originally the face value was 10 rupees but now people are willing to spend even 100 rupees or 10000 rupees you don't know that is the market value to purchase one share so this is the market value market value is the the value which the the, the buyers the prospective buyers are willing to shell out to purchase the shares of the company right this is the uh, secondary market that is the share market but the, the but, but the company itself right the company itself while it is issuing shares it can issue the shares at what is known as a share premium so the the, the face value can be 10 rupees but the company might be saying will issue it at a premium of 100 rupees that is the face value of 10 rupees share is going to be now be issued at 100 rupees this 10 rupees is a this 90 rupees is a premium so they're saying we are a, a reputed company this share has a, a potential for appreciation the value will be appreciated in future we are 
So we are now issuing this 10 rupees share for 100 rupees. So this 10 rupees is a face value, whereas this 90 is known as the premium. So when you enter it into the accounts under the capital, right? Under the, the capital, what you're going to see is the cap the company is going to in under the share capital, as the paid up capital is going to enter only this 10. This face value, the face value, the paid up capital is always going to be the, the face value. Irrespective of the market value, irrespective of the the premium which the company has issued shares, the paid up capital is always going to be the, the face value. So the paid up capital will be 10. And then the, in the reserves and surplus, under the item called share securities, this premium account or share premium account, this 90 will be entered. So in the reserves, please note that this 100 rupees belongs to the company. See the company has issued a share of 10 rupees for 100 rupees, thereby it has it has uh, earned a premium of 90 rupees. But this is a, in a way, it's a profit to the company. The, the reputation of the company has enabled it to sell a share, issue a share of face value 10 rupees at 100 rupees. This is the hard work of the company. This is the reputation of the company that has enabled it to issue a share of 10 rupees at 100 rupees. So this is a, a profit in a way. It is a, a fund that is belonging to the company. So it goes into the reserves and surplus. So under reserves and surplus, there will be a, a separate item called Securities premium account or share premium account and to the, into this this 90 will go. So this is also in a way these are funds belonging to the owner. So if you see an item called share premium account, please put it under the reserves and surplus, right? Another item, another reserve item you need to be very careful is the, the revaluation reserve. This is an item which you are going to encounter in some cases. You need to understand what is this revaluation. Reserve. So another asset is the company has some items called land, it is called some buildings, it is called some machinery, some various items. And here we are saying the value items is this is uh, 50 lakhs land, building is some 200 lakhs, machinery is some 100 lakhs. So these are the three items the asset sites. So now the company feels that the land, this is a factory land, the value of the land has appreciated. So the company is under the uh, opinion that the value, the, since the balance sheet has to show the true value of the balance sheet, the, the business. So when you are saying the balance sheet, balance sheet has to show the true position of the company. The company feels that this is not a true position. The value, the land value has now appreciated to 100 lakhs. So they now want to recast this balance sheet. They want to show the value of correct value of land 100 lakhs in the balance sheet. So now they will increase this land value to 100 lakhs. They, they will no not show 50 lakhs but 100 lakhs. So what what to do on the, on the liability side? Because the balance sheet should always tally. Prior to this entry, let us say the balance sheet was tallying 1000 lakhs here and 1000 lakhs here. Now you have increased this land value so by 50 lakhs. So this now has become 1050. So somehow you have to uh, add in the 50 here also. Otherwise, balance sheet won't tell you. So, what is the item that's going to affect? So, you create a reserve on the liability side, what is known as the revaluation reserve. And you place that 50 here. So, please see that compared to share premium account, which you discussed earlier. In the case of share premium account, this is a real fund. This is a real fund. Funds are actually coming into the company. For example, if the face value of a share is 10 lakhs, is 10 rupees, and you issued it for 100 rupees, the balance 90, the share premium, it is a real cash coming into the company. This is real funds. This is not a book entry. This is really coming into the company because people are willing to pay 100 rupees for this face value share of 10. They are willing to pay that additional 90 rupees to get a share of this company. So this is real funds coming into the company. But here if you see revaluation is only a book entry. Revaluation is only a book entry. Here the company has just, in, in the opinion of the company, the company says the land is now not worth 50 but it's 100 lakhs. And thereby it has created a, a entry just, 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 to be tally, just to tally the balance sheet. It has now created a revaluation reserve on the liability set. So what you have to understand, this is only a book entry. No real cash has come into the business. So it is a usual practice, right? It is a usual practice and it is a, a correct practice. Whenever bankers encounter revaluation, so what they are going to say is they are going to ignore this item. So what they are going to do? So how are you going to cancel out this effect? The way to cancel the effect of revaluation reserve is you encounter this item, direct reserves and surplus because this item will be appearing under the reserves and surplus. This is revaluation reserve will be appearing under the reserves and surplus. So if the reserves and surplus is say 90 lakhs, subtract this 50 lakhs and show only 40 lakhs. So one way to cancel on the liability side. On the liability side, you are going to cancel the, the revaluation reserve by detecting what is the revaluation reserve. So ignore it. So if the total reserves and surplus is 90 lakhs, out of which revaluation reserve is 50 lakhs, detect that, ignore it and just show 40 lakhs on the liability side, reserves and surplus. Correspondingly, on the asset side, the gross block, right? Because the land has increased by 50 lakhs. When you come to the gross block, the gross block is showing some 400 lakhs. No, not 400 lakhs. Here we have uh, 100, 200, 300, 400. So 400 lakhs is showing. This might be the written down value. Or let us take this the gross block value. So detect the 50. Show only 350 on the asset side. So how are you going to cancel the revaluation reserve? So whenever you encounter a item called revaluation reserve, you have to cancel the, the revaluation aspect. So to cancel the revaluation reserve, you have to do two things. One, you have to 
on the liability side on the liability side deduct that amount deduct that amount from reserves and surplus from the reserves and surplus deduct that amount and on the asset side what are you going to do deduct it from the fixed assets deduct from fixed assets and thereby you'll be cancelling the revaluation reserve so for example if the reserves and surplus if you're giving a balance sheet reserves and surplus is 1000 lakhs out of which revaluation reserve is some 75 lakhs so what are you going to do just show 925 lakhs as the reserves and surplus in the cma data in the cma data don't take 1000 lakhs deduct the 75 lakhs show only 9.5 lakhs and then the asset side for example if the gross block is 700 lakhs you deduct the same amount 75 lakhs same 75 lakhs and show only 6.5 in the fixed assets the net block right so thereby you'll be cancelling the revaluation reserve are you are you clear why we are doing this we are doing this because revaluation reserve is only a book entry no real funds have come into the business when you are when you are going to actually have this funds when you are winding up the company when you're selling the assets then you are actually going to realize that real that uh, for example we spoke of that land is not 50 lakhs it is 100 lakhs when you're going to know it's actually going to fetch 100 lakhs only when the company is wound up and you sell the assets till then till that time you're not going to realize this 100 lakhs till that time the cash is not going to come in this is only a book entry so since it is only book entry let us not take into the calculation of various ratios and other uh, analysis ignore that revaluation is so bankers it is a standard practice to ignore the revaluation reserve because if you don't cancel that revaluation reserve, re reserves and surplus will be a part of what is known as net worth. We are going to see later that net worth is nothing but capital plus reserves and surplus. So if you are not going to detect the reserves of that revaluation reserve, you are unnecessarily going to show a higher amount of reserves and surplus, and thereby you are going to show a higher amount of net worth. And net worth is an input for many other many many formulas in the financial ratios. You have various ratios like SETI, Elbert, and W various ratios which we are going to discuss. So if you don't have this uh, ratio correctly. So many ratios are going to be adversely affected. So if you show revaluation reserve, you are going to show a higher amount of reserves and surplus. You are going to show higher amount of net worth, and all ratios will be, including that which have input of net worth, will be artificially uh, be inflated. So to cancel the uh, revaluation effect, always so to have a correct ratio, to have a correct measure of the net worth, always take into account the revaluation reserve, right? So we discuss the share premium account. So we discuss the revaluation reserve. We we discuss is just a book entry. Uh, and the ratios which uh, take net worth as one of the input will be affected therefore you have to ignore this item so how to cancel the revaluation aspect we also discuss we detect from the reserves and surplus on the liability side and we detect from the fixed assets on the asset side right so one more point which you need to understand is when we discuss term loan appraisal which we'll do in a later chapter say for example the project cost is 100 crores and the company is saying we are going to finance this 100 crores by another means of finance we are going to discuss what project cost is, what means of finance is. But for the moment, let us assume that the project cost is 100 crores. And the company is saying we are going to meet this 100 crores cost by our own funds, our equity. This is the capital. Uh, say 25 lakhs, 25 crores. Uh, banks, please give a loan of uh, 60 crores. And the balance 15 crores. We will meet from what is known as internal crores. Internal crores are nothing but... Uh, retained profits so the company is saying since we are a running account so since we are running unit we are generating some profits so out of those profits will be meeting some part of the project cost we'll of course be bringing some fresh cash fresh funds that is 25 crores but 15 crores will be meeting from the uh, profits for out of the out of the existing operations and balance 60 crores you finance so please please be be careful when when you encounter these sort of situations i'm not saying this is wrong uh, these sort of things do happen. These sort of things is something even some even in some big companies uh, have means of how internal accruals as one of the uh, components of means of finance. I'm not saying it is wrong. I'm not saying it is wrong. Uh, many many companies do it, and banks usually accept it. But the point is, as far as possible, as far as possible, please try to uh, as far as the the contribution of the promoter is con is concerned, as far as possible, try to insist for equity. Uh, don't don't rely on internal accruals. I mean, as far as possible. I'm saying many companies do it and banks usually accept it but as far as possible try to try let, let to have the promoters infuse the additional capital in form of fresh equity right don't don't depend on internal growth because if we are, because we are not sure about the profitability of the unit so the company is saying this is a running unit we are generating profit and out of this will be meeting the project cost what happens if something the what happens if the uh, something goes on in the profit the unit is unable to generate sufficient profits then midway to the project midway when the project is under implementation when the company when the uh, promoters cannot uh, generate the sufficient revenue sufficient profits the project will be halted and then as a banker you'll be to as a to as a banker you'll be forced to sanction some additional loan right for uh, you have some additional loans sometimes you sanction for uh, cost escalation and various reasons so in this case you if the if the company says i cannot sanction the company will again come because your funds are blocked 
as a banker your funds are also blocked and only only if the project takes off your loan will be repaid so then you'll be forced to sanction some additional loan so, so so as far as possible try to try to uh, let the uh, promoters bring in additional capital for the promoters contribution don't rely too much on internal accruals see how when when you where you can use internal accruals where you can use internal accruals so we'll discuss working capital in a later chapter so for working capital the power the promoters have to get something called working capital margin there you can use internal accruals see let internal accruals grow go to let internal accruals go towards the uh, working capital margin so since the business will be doing well since the business is increasing the company needs additional capital which means they have to bring in additional margin so the additional working capital margin can be met by internal accruals that you can accept let that let that internal accruals take care of the additional working capital margin but as far as term loan is concerned as far as term loan is concerned a project finance for a project Uh, the promoter's contribution, as far as possible, please insist on getting the promoter's contribution in the form of equity, right? In the form of uh, capital, not through internal accruals, as far as possible, right? Sometimes you may be forced to do. Sometimes uh, this might not be possible, uh, and sometimes banks accept it fine. But I'm just saying, as far as possible, uh, let internal accruals be used for working capital margin, right? And term loan margin, please ensure that it comes to the form of fresh equity, right? And whenever uh, you have such a scenario, when where when you are, uh, when that is not possible, when you had to accept internal accruals as a uh, a part of project cost, whenever you you tried you tried to convince the borrower to bring in initial capital, but that didn't materialize, and you had to accept the project cost and the means of finance. One of the means of finance was internal accruals. You could not convince the company, or you you could not convince the top management. So the loan was sanctioned with internal accruals as one of the uh, components of means of finance. At least then ensure in the terms of condition you have some strong conditions stipulated. So please ensure some strong conditions are stipulated that in case the projected profitability is not achieved. So this is the company will be giving some projected financials and some projected profitability will be uh, projected. So please stipulate some very strong conditions that in case the projected profitability is not achieved, how the company is going to uh, meet the project cost? Because the project cost has to be met because the project has to be completed. See whether the company if the company doesn't uh, generate enough uh, profits from the existing operation, somehow it has to uh, finance it. That's why. That's why. Uh, you have to ensure that the promoters are financially sound. See, the promoters have to be financially sound to meet the to meet their margin. Even if the company, even if the profits do not make less, even if the projected profits do not make less, even then the promoters have to be financially sound to bring in the shortfall. Say, for example, out of the hundred crores project, bank has sanctioned sixty crores. Out of the balance forty crores, the promoter is saying we will bring in. 25 crores fresh capital and 15 crores retained earnings. We are going to bid by 15 crores. If, for example, this 15 crores would not be less, if if due to some reason only 5 crores could be generated from the profits, the the unit did badly, the industry cycle was not good, only 5 crores were generated, then the shortfall of 10 crores has to be brought in by the promoters. Right? The promoters now had to bring not 25 but 35. The promoters had to be financially sound to to bring the 35 crores. That's why at the time of assessment you have to be. You you have to ensure that the other promoters financially sound to bring in 40 crores. Don't 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 think of just 25 crores. You also think what if the the envisaged profitability could not be achieved? What if the 15 crores could not be brought? Then the promoter should be bringing 40 crores from their own funds. Are the promoters financially sound to do that? That is what you have to ascertain, right? So as far as possible, always try to ensure that fresh capital comes in from the promoters because fresh commitment fresh because fresh capital means fresh commitment from the promoters. The promoters are engaging that and are interested in the business, right? And retained profits can be used for can can be used for in, increasing the the working capital margin. So to the extent possible, insist for fresh capital infusion for term loan margins. Retained profits can be used for meeting working capital margin. So there's one more point that uh, we'll discuss here. Is cost of resources supply zero? So we we told that earlier. We discussed this earlier. So we discussed that this uh, surplus, right? This resources surplus comes from the profit. So a company has earned profit and it is pumping that money. It is reinvesting this money back into the business. So what is the cost associated with this? Is this zero? because every source of fund under the liability side is various sources are there what are the sources capital is there bank loans are there various sources are there each each fund has a cost associated to it bank loans has some interest say for example 10% there is some there is some cost associated with the uh, source of funds so what is the source associated with this reinvested uh, profits so we are investing the profit so is it free just because the owners are bringing it is it a free source of fund right for say for example there two options one you are now in requirement of 10 crores additional requirement the company now now needs additional 10 crores for expansion the company has generated profits of 10 crores and one bank is ready to sanction a loan of 10 crores which you, which which you should take are are is the cost zero so there are two options here 
you can take 10 crores loan from the bank a bank is is ready to give you sanction 10 crores you also generated a profit of 10 crores and you have the option of reinvesting it back into the business so which option you should consider are is is, is the cost associated with both the same this loan is 10% the rate of interest on this loan is 10% this reason surplus is zero just because the promoters are bringing it is the cost zero no please see that why the promoters are reinvesting there is a motive here right there is a, a motive here why the promoters are reinvesting what is the option for them either they can use it for the personal consumption or they can reinvest it so if they use it for the personal consumption then maybe they have bought some a uh, flat for their own personal use flat so this flat will appreciate in value they bought it from some 25 lakhs tomorrow it's going to become 30 lakhs 40 lakhs right or they might have purchased some gold so gold today uh, the the gold today purchase was 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 this uh, 10 lakhs tomorrow it will become 20 lakhs so so had they invested this elsewhere in alternative investment avenues they would have got somewhere so, and the and by reinvesting in the back into the business they have foregone that opportunity so by reinvesting that that reinvested funds should at least generate whatever they have lost see they have foregone some opportunity they have foregone some opportunity various opportunities they, they could have bought, bought some flat they have purchased gold various opportunities so they have foregone this opportunity and reinvested back in the business with the with the motive that the reinvestment is going to generate at least whatever they have foregone if they had if they had obtained 15 percent from the alternate investment avenues this reinvestment should at least generate 15 percent otherwise there is no fun see if, if the company doesn't say, say, say for example you had two options one you can see you have two options right one you can put it you have one lakh cash with you one you can put it in a fact fixed deposit fixed deposit is going to give you 10 percent right then you have a a friend who is asking you i want one lakh i'll give 15 percent which one will you choose of course there is a risk element bank is going to come most compulsorily going to give you that 10 percent your friend maybe it's a risky venture for, for example let us assume that you're going to certain you're certainly going to get back that uh, that amount so let us not worry about the risk so both are at the same degree of risk so which one you're going to prefer before 15 percent because you're going to get a higher return so here the promoters similarly here the promoters had option to invest in some other opportunities like gold or land or some other opportunities but they have reinvested it back into the business so thereby they have foregone this opportunity so now the business should generate at least this 15 percent if they're expecting 15 percent it has to generate at least 15 percent to satisfy them if the, if, the, if, the, if this is 20 percent the business should generate 20 percent so there is a cost associated with reason surplus reason surplus doesn't mean it is a free source of fund no there is a cost associated with reason surplus anyway cost of capital is a a very advanced topic it's one of the topics in financial management so we are not going to discuss about cost of capital but please understand that the cost associated is not zero it is not a free source of fund so usually you're going to come across this term called net worth so net worth is nothing but the the sum of capital plus reserves surplus so we already told that the profit the reserves surplus also belong to the owners so the owners have contributed to the funds of the company in two ways one the original capital the paid up capital and also the retained earnings so this retained profit will be reflected in what is known as the reserves and surplus so both these belongs to the the promoters so the net worth is what the contribution by the uh, is also known as the owner's equity the shareholder's equity or net asset so it is a it is the funds infused by the owners right but but you know the difference capital is the initial capital infused paid capital is the initial capital infused and this is the reserves and surplus out of the profit generated but anyway both of them belongs to the one so when you speak of net worth you are speaking of the uh, from the owner's point of view how much how much of their funds are in the business how much of their funds either in the form of initial capital or retained earnings so what is the net worth of the uh, promoter so please note that net worth is nothing but capital plus reserves so in various uh, ratios and ratio analysis we're going to some ratios like for example tul by tnw we're going to discuss what it is so their tnw means net worth tnw means tangible net worth net worth means you're going to take the capital this is a surplus add it you'll get net worth so what is tangible net worth so another concept tangible net worth so for this we have to uh, see an item called loss so we already discussed that all losses has to be borne by the owner all profits have to be all profits go to the owner and all losses have to be borne by the owner so if I say for example the company has started business in this year the promoters have infused 10 lakhs right so there's the various assets here various liabilities here right this is a balance sheet the promoters have invest, invested a capital of 10 lakhs so in this year the company has made a loss of 2 lakhs so who's going to bear this loss the loss has to be borne by the owner so this 10 lakhs is actually now effectively 8 lakhs please understand that 
when we discussed the concept of balance sheet, we said that one way to look at the balance sheet is from a liquidation concept. That is, if the company was to wind up today, how it is going to settle the dues? How the dues are going to be settled? So let us assume the total of assets is going to generate 100 lakhs, right? And liabilities totally 100 lakhs. So by selling the assets, is going to realize cash of 100 lakhs, and with the 100 lakhs, is going to pay all this. Uh, all these lenders so bank has some 50 lakhs credit has some 20 lakhs so on and finally whatever is residual so finally it's going to be left with 10 lakhs and that 10 lakhs will be going to the owner because this is capital but now we are saying that the loss is 2 lakhs so if the loss is 2 lakhs now the company has to pay only 8 lakhs to the promoter because that is what left because that will be what is the amount left you now you won't be getting 100 lakhs you'll be getting only 98 lakhs please see that the entry for this uh, loss will be or something called accumulated loss. There are two ways in which you can have this entry, which we are going to discuss in detail later. But for the moment, please see that if the, if there is a profit, there is a capital here, hundred lakhs. If there is a profit of ten lakhs, you are going to enter it, and it becomes one ten lakhs. Fine. But if there is a loss, if there is a loss of ten lakhs, you are going to deduct from the capital. It is going to nine lakhs. There are two ways to doing it. One. So what if the company continuously makes loss? So now it is made a loss of not ten lakhs, forty lakhs. So next year it is made a loss of sixty lakhs. Now capital has become zero, negative. So are you going to show this capital as negative figure? So the way to do is usually what they do is keep the capital as 100 lakhs. Under the asset side, you have a item called accumulated loss. You show that accumulated loss here, 110 lakhs. What is this accumulated loss? In the first year, the company has made a loss of 10 lakhs. Second year, 40 lakhs. Third year, 50, 60 lakhs. So put together, accumulated for the past three years, the company has made a loss of 110 lakhs. So, so show that accumulated loss separately. Don't don't show that show don't show a negative capital figure. Keep the capital as hundred lakhs. Show that accumulated loss of one ten lakhs. The net effect is same. Net effect is hundred minus one ten negative capital of ten. But don't show negative capital. That doesn't make sense. So keep that capital as hundred lakhs. Accumulated loss one ten lakhs on the asset side. This is an intangible asset. Now if you want to calculate net worth, so net worth is capital plus reserves. Now capital is hundred, but reserves is zero. There is no reserve. This is net worth. This is net worth. Net worth is capital plus reserves. Tangible net worth means capital plus reserves minus intangible assets. So you deduct this 110. So 100 plus 0 minus 110. Now you are going to get a minus 10. So this is the net worth of the company. Net worth is minus 10 now because there is an accumulated loss of 110 lakhs. So put it in the to put it in the form of a formula. Net worth is capital plus reserves and surplus, right? So this is net worth. This is the the funds that are, that are totally belonging to the promoters because the promoters have not only contributed their initial capital they have also uh, retained some earnings by not taking the profit they have reinvested the profits back into the business and thereby this reason surplus is also a, a source of fund this belongs to the owner so net worth is the total funds that are contributed by the owners tangible net worth is right tangible net worth is net worth that is nothing but this capital plus reason surplus right net worth minus intangible assets so we didn't come to this concept as yet intangible assets so you're going to in a future lecture we're going to see what are these intangible assets so you have something called accumulated loss right some preliminary expenses right to the extent not written off so you're going to see some various items under the intangible assets so that intangible assets will be appearing under the asset side of the balance sheet so you're going to deduct from the network the intangible assets and arrive what is known as the tangible net worth right so we are going to see this later for the moment let's let us remember these two formulas net worth is capital plus reserves and surplus tangible net worth is net worth minus intangible assets so can net worth that is tangible net worth tnw can can it be negative right so what we said that Net worth is nothing but the contribution of the, the promoters to the business and they have they might have contributed in the capital or a, a retained earnings. So this is the contribution, retained profits. This is the contribution. So initially they had a capital of 10 lakhs and every year they are earning some profit, 1 lakh, 2 lakhs, right? The earnings, they, they are contributing some way. So this is some positive figure. So can it be negative? So what do you mean by negative? So can net worth be negative? So either the promoters didn't contribute anything or they contributed to some positive amount. What is this negative? Can net worth be negative? So so let us understand. We already discussed that balance sheet can be thought of as a from the point of view of liquidation concept. So what the liquidation concept says is if the company were to wind up today, 
So it will sell all its assets. Say it will realize 100 lakhs. And there are various lenders here. Say there's some owners here, bank loan, creditors. So various parties are there and the company is going to repay this. Say for example, this 100 lakhs total is owners have contributed 20 lakhs, bank has given some 70 lakhs, creditors are 10 lakhs. So but the company by selling all these assets has generated 100 lakhs and it is going to repay all these parties. It is going to give the bank repay 70 lakhs to the bank, 10 lakhs to the creditors and the owner is going to take 20 lakhs. What we mean by net worth being negative is, I am now going to show you a balance sheet where net worth is going to be negative. So when we say net worth is negative, what we are saying is, again the company has sold assets, 100 lakhs. Now, now this 100 lakhs total, right, this 100 lakhs total, let us see the breakup is like this. The breakup in this case is, owners is negative, minus 20, right, then bank, bank has some, say 90 lakhs, and creditors, let's say 30 lakhs. So see the total, 90 plus 30 is 120, minus 20 is 100. So, so the company has sold now assets of 100 lakhs and realize sell, sold all its assets and realize 100 lakhs. Now it is it is going to settle the juice of the various parties. So it is it is paid 90 lakhs to the the bank, creators 30 lakhs. But see here, these two put together is 120 lakhs. While the assets have generated only 100 lakhs, the company has to pay 120 lakhs to the outside parties. So when we say that ne negative net worth, when we are saying that net worth is negative, what we are saying is, even by selling all the assets, the company cannot sell the outside parties. The company cannot pay the outside parties. The funds generated by selling all the assets are not sufficient to repay the, to, to settle the juice of the outside parties. So here in this case, the company has generated only 100 lakhs by selling all its assets. But the outside party, the bank, the company has to pay 90 lakhs to the bank, 30 to the creditors. 120 lakhs it has to pay, whereas it has gone only 100 lakhs. So there is a shortfall of 20. So who has to pay this 20? Obviously the owner has to pay the 20. But his capital is not there in the business. His capital is eroded. What is meant by capital erosion? There is no capital here. Uh, initially the cap, the company, the promoters might have pumped some 10 lakhs. But now every year the company is incurring loss, 2 lakhs, 5 lakhs, 3 lakhs. And ultimately this, this capital, now in the first year it has made a, a loss of 2 lakhs. So now the capital has come to 8 lakhs. Now again next year 5 lakhs. Capital has got eroded to 3 lakhs. Next 3 lakhs, completely it has got eroded. In the next year, the company has again made a loss of 4 lakhs. Now, you can see that the uh, minus 4 lakhs, the, the net worth is becoming negative. What it means is, as the company keeps on accumulating, gets, uh, when the losses get gets accumulated, the capital gets eroded. And finally, when the net worth becomes negative, what we are saying is, even if the company sells all its assets, it will be unable to pay all the lenders. So, there will be some people who will be left unpaid. So, the sh in this case, the shortfall is 20. The company is realizing only 100 lakhs, whereas the dues to the outside parties is 120. This is the shortfall of minus 20. So we are saying that when we are saying that net worth is negative, whenever we say that net worth is negative, it's a very dangerous situation. We are saying now, what what when the net worth is negative, so the, to answer the question, can net worth be negative? It can be negative. But it's a dangerous situation because the promoter's capital is not in the business. You see here, in this scenario, the promoter's capital is zero. Not only it is zero, it is negative in the sense that the company is the company is unable to pay all its debtors if, if it were to wind up today, right? So this is a very uh, negative situation. So whenever you see negative net worth, you have to be careful in extending further finance to the company because the financials are not satisfactory. When you are saying net worth is negative, this is not a, a good sign, right? Now the now now to improve the financial position of this company, the the promoters have to pump in some additional funds, at least 20. First of all, first of all, they have to pump in 20, and something more than 20 to turn their capital into positive. So maybe they have to purchase, they have to bring in some additional capital of 30 lakhs to make good this shortfall of 20 and also some uh, 10 lakhs additional capital. So whenever you see negative net worth, is a, it is a possibility, it can happen, but it is a, a negative situation and which you should avoid and immediate corrective steps should be taken. And the first step you have to take is to ensure that the promoters bring in some additional capital to improve the uh, financial portion of the company. So can net worth be negative? Yes, it can be negative. Erosion of capital, we call it the capitalist. When, when we say the capital is eroded, what we are saying is that accumulate losses slowly has slowly wiped out the capital and it's come to a situation where the net worth is negative, right? It can happen. So with this, we come to the end of the segment. So in the segment 6.3, we have discussed about reserves and surplus. We have seen the various items that can appear under the reserves and surplus. We discussed in detail some specific items like uh, share, share premium account, that's the securities premium account. We discussed also about the revaluation reserve and told that we discussed that we have to always ignore revaluation reserve by making some adjustment. You have to deduct that amount from the liability side 
under the reserves and surplus and detect the same amount from the fixed assets also so we have also discussed that we have also discussed about uh, in brief about the profit and loss appropriation account even if you couldn't understand it it doesn't matter that is an accounting part uh, just for the sake of completeness we have discussed here we also discussed the difference between a, uh, a provision and a reserve again that is something which you need not be worried too much right this is an advanced topic just for the sake of uh, having a comprehensive coverage we have discussed those topics right so one point you have to be uh, very clear is even though the the reserves and surplus in a, a balance sheet under the reserves and surplus you can have a various items the company's balance sheet will be listing various items like share payment account right capital reserve general reserve various items but in the cma data we are going to club all this under a single item called reserves and surplus in cma data you have space for only one single line reserves and surplus so you are going to take the total reserves and surplus and put the figure as it is unless you have a uh, revaluation reserve in which case you are going to detect the revaluation reserve and show the uh, difference amount right so then we also discuss the importance of uh, the promoter's margin uh, to be brought in in the form of capital so we discuss that sometimes companies will be showing under the means of finance that they will be meeting part of the project cost out of written profits right there will be situations where this can be acceptable but as far as possible try to ensure that the borrowers bring in the fresh capital towards meeting the term loan margin that written profits can be used as a uh, for the for the for, for working capital margin so as the company grows it will be requiring more working capital and it has to uh, bring in more working capital margin for that purpose you can use the uh, retained profit but as far as possible for the term loan margin uh, right for a new project as far as possible ensure that the fresh capital comes so then we discussed about the uh, net worth net worth is nothing but the capital plus reserves right net worth is nothing but capital plus reserve and we also discussed the concept of tangible net worth where this is net worth minus any intangible assets we are going to discuss intangible assets when we come to that particular item but for now please remember that tnw is what the item we are uh, interested in whenever we see net worth we actually imply tnw we are more interested in the tnw whenever you calculate any ratios based on net worth we actually meaning it is tnw right we are interested in tnw because if the if the capital is 100 lakhs if the capital is 100 lakhs but whereas the accumulated loss is 120 lakhs there is no fun in taking net worth net worth is net worth is capital plus reserves so take take this example where capital is 100 lakhs reserves is zero so reserves capital plus reserves is net worth so net worth is 100 lakhs but intangible assets some accumulated loss is 120 lakhs so there is no fun in taking uh, the formula in uh, calculating formulas of net worth taking 100 when actually there is no uh, when there is actually erosion of capital when, when the when the tangible net worth is minus 20 so here the owners entire capital is eroded by the accumulated loss of 120 the entire capital is eroded they have no capital left in the business now it is minus 20 so whenever we take net worth for calculation it actually means TNW right so with this we come to the end of the segment the next segment will be continuing our discussion on the the various li other liabilities address but before that we'll take a small exercise uh, we have completed two exercises so far so in the next exercise that is exercise three what we'll be discussing is some questions to test your understanding on the the concepts we have discussed in the cap capital and reserves and surplus right so see you then